Hey, Cock 45 here, your internet shooting companion, coming to you from the hot, humid hills of Tennessee. Yes, Tennessee, the home of Dolly Parton, Sevierville. Yes, coming to you again, and it's not quite as nice as it was last week, but it's not bad. I don't mind the heat. And the humidity is there, but it's not as bad as it sometimes is in July. Uh, it's just hot, about 100 degrees, I think. So uh, that's what it's supposed to get to today. But, you know, we can live with it. I'd rather it be warm again, as I have said before, than be 30 degrees or 25. I can stay in the heat. I don't mind the heat. I do. I get out and walk. In fact, I'm going to go walking uh, in a couple hours. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm glad you're here. I really am. And, uh, I am, uh, yeah, I mentioned Dolly. We're going to, uh, uh, over Sevierville. And by the time you see this, here we go again with this mental exercise, I will have met some of you that I have not met yet today. <laughs> and in fact, on this one, I'm going uh, a little early, a couple of days. So I need to, uh, do the Sunday video here midweek and maybe keep it a little shorter even, uh, so I can get it uploaded and all that, you know, before I leave and everything, because I will be out of pocket here. Uh, for a few days, gonna hang out with my grandson, do the meet and greet at, uh, at Bud's in Sevierville. So that'll be fun, that, that'll be fun. It's gonna be a great week and I'll tell you about it when I get back, how's that? Even though when you see me right now, when you see me where you're sitting, looking at your watch, the time on Sunday, I'm already back. So uh, yeah, glad to see you all and uh, uh, yeah, I want to thank people help us. Bud's Gun Shop and Range, great outfit. The uh, Silencer Central, yep, they do one thing, and you know what it is. They do it really, really well, don't they? Great people. Uh, that's what makes a company uh, a good company, isn't it? Uh, whatever it is, whether it's Bud's or Silencer Central or Alabama Holster or uh, I was going to say, uh, yeah, Sonoran Desert, whoever it is, it's the people in the company that make it what it is or it is nobody's perfect but it's the people in the company that make it what it is for sure uh but yeah appreciate all these folks and the sonoran desert institute sdi.edu great company get yourself educated more educated from a distance you can do that because you might not want well i can always say that or i, I think of that uh, they're based in phoenix but you know you take it from anywhere uh yeah so i'm gonna shoot you know what i have out what was i shooting who knows well, if you've read the description, I always put it in the description. But if you've not read the description, do you know? The model, Smith & Wesson, of course. Big end frame. Look at the barrel. Yeah, model 27. Yep. The big old end frame. Yep. Registered Magnum. That's what they called them when they came out in 1935. Some of you might have been there. 1935 it was the cat's meow in 1935 the most powerful handgun really the least production handgun at the time magnum and it helped start i guess the magnum craze so whoever you were a hunter or a cop or whoever and you wanted to carry one of 357 magnum on your person guess what legal or not it was going to be a big, heavy gun. <laughs> it's going to be a big end frame. Not only is an end frame a, a pretty heavy gun, as you know, you ever picked up a 44, a 45, whatever. Uh, you know, same old thing I always tell you, at least regarding a cylinder, uh, with those little bitty holes, or smaller holes, you know, it's, it's heavier. Now, you, you barrel is contoured down, so it's not as heavy. So. No, that's an interesting question. I wonder what the difference is between a, and weight, between a Model 27 like this and a Model 29, They're the exact same barrel length. Uh, I'd say the 29 is a little heavier, maybe. It's gonna feel more, it's gonna be more barrel heavy. Um, you got a lighter barrel on this, but you've got a slightly heavier cylinder, but probably the 29 with them. We'll have to do that. This is a, uh, is that a six or six and a half? Hey, it might be a six. I don't know. You need the same barrel length, would you? I, I just have a six and a half inch 29. 
do I have another one? Is it be comparable? No. Uh, I could compare it with my 25 that I brought out, what, last week or week before? Recently, the uh, Model 25.5 and 45 Colt, same gun and 45 Colt, it's got a six inch barrel, I think. I don't think it's six and a half, I think it's six. Uh, so one or the other I could compare. All right, I know you're worried about that. Uh, I don't know, you know, if you're kind of a gun person, things like that come to your mind. So uh, just a reminder again, everything's on Rumble. This should be on Rumble. Hopefully I have time to get it up on Rumble too before I leave and, and all that. And uh, as I said, we'll keep you abreast of videos that are taken down. And I have actually gone back and been fixing some of them. It's just a insurmountable task. But um, when I say fix, that's a, a YouTube's definition. It's not my definition. <laughs> but I've been working on getting the dot .com uh, ads out and uh, it's very tedious if you've ever done that. If you've tried to edit online something, you can take out, it's rather uh, a tedious process to do. You cannot add, as far as I know, you know anything, but uh, it, uh, so I was trying to go through and some of the, oh, my favorite videos or videos I know really be tough to reproduce or we might never get back up or whatever. And trying to uh, do a little slice and dicing to, to save them. And, uh, and I, I think uh, some of them I will have saved. Yeah, I think I will have. <laughs> so it just depends on when they turn the dogs loose, uh, the AI dogs again. Uh, so we're all in Rumble, and uh, I, I, I really like this Model 27. See if there was something else I wanted to remind you of right away. What the heck was that? Well, don't forget the Hickok 45 Clips channel. John's still posting every morning. And the Hickok 45 Talks channel. I'm posting two or three of those every week. Okay. Yakking at you about something. Uh, let's see. Well, those were, uh, what was I shooting when I you opened? When you first saw my pretty face, uh, some Underwood 357 Magnum. This is some Steinle 38 Special. Let's shoot something light and friendly now. Although almost anything you fire at a Model 27 is going to be pretty friendly. Why is that? Come on, I just explained it. They're heavy. They're big old guns. They they just hold six. These old now you know there's modern versions of this. I guess most of them are stainless. They're the 627 variations of that that hold seven or eight. But uh, these held six, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Big old end frame. Great shooters. I, I uh, Carrying that thing perish the thought, you know. Uh, I mean, just on a daily basis. Now, out in the woods in a good holster, it's not a big deal, but I, I wouldn't want to carry something this heavy as a defensive firearm uh, in, in general. Now, as a defensive firearm, again, in the woods, yeah, with some good, heavy, hard cast bullets, there's probably people that do that as bear defense, you know. All right, who drew that funny face on that target? I wonder who that was. It's like a child's drawing. <laughs> That's because it's my drawing. <laughs> oh, Clyde, I'm sorry to ignore you again. How rude. Yeah. <laughs> I like to shoot him with 38 Special from help here because it's his fault if he gets hit. Why? Because, well, I almost said something dumb, didn't I? The sound probably gets to him about the same time the bullet does. Actually, the sound travels a little faster than these rounds, probably. So, but still, he has a little bit of time. He might be able to get out of the way. All right. To us, it sounds like more of a, uh, a delay, I guess. Yeah, see if I can put one on the gong. <laughs> nice. Yeah, those are fun. Uh, big old heavy gun like this. It wouldn't have to be this heavy. But if you can, uh, if you're out with someone who hadn't fired a gun before, a handgun, uh, I highly recommend a 357 if you have one and uh, have some 38 special to uh, let them shoot first time. Get the feel of the firearm. 
And if they're really brand new to shooting, let's give them a feel for uh, shooting in general, period, uh, and, and without blasting them with recoil and turning them against handguns or firearms, really. And I mentioned that, I guess, last week or somewhere that uh, good way to turn people off of shooting. You don't want everyone to do that. Go the other, if, if you're gonna err, err on the side of lighter than they can handle, is my recommendation. Start with a 22, 22 short and slowly work up. You want them to enjoy it. You want them to have fun, you know, doing it, right? And they'll get used to the recoil. You could take somebody who has been shooting a, a, a great deal for 10 or 20 years, but let's say, I don't know, they've been into nine millimeter and that's maybe about all they have fired. Some 38 special and nine millimeter, maybe lots of it, you know, and, they, and a big duty gun or something. And uh, maybe they're a cop, they, that's mainly, that's all they have shot pretty much. Uh, well, even someone like that, you put a 44 Magnum or even a hot 357 in, the, in a lighter gun or a 44 Magnum or something really warm, 10 millimeter, uh, that could turn them off of that gun or sports shooting. You get used to a level of recoil and you think that's, that's, that's fine, you've learned to handle that, and you're not even aware of those next steps of recoil. <laughs> that's one thing I always have. I, I have that history helps me. I have fired some really uh, hard kicking stuff. I have pulled both barrels at, simultaneously on a, on a 12 gauge, you know, with high brass on a coach gun uh, a few times. And uh, I know what re real recoil is. And uh, I fired, I owned a 458 Win Mag, a 375 H&H, &H, and I, I have fired all that stuff in a lot of 12 gauge, as you know. You've seen me probably fire a lot of 12 gauge slugs and that kind of thing, double up buck. So you can put a firearm, a 30 out six in, in my shoulder and I can shoot it. And uh, you might think it kicks, but to me, it doesn't really kick at all, almost, you know. Uh, and it's, it's just a, it's not that I'm stronger or tougher. It's just that I'm, uh, my frame of reference is, is so different. It's so different. I guess it's like if you pulled someone out of uh, the year, what, 1930, 35 or something, you know, and they've been driving trucks and cars their whole lives, and they're, they're like, say, 1930. Uh, but what's the top speed back then of a car, the average car? They're going 45 miles an hour. They're flying. And then you put them in a modern car and let them uh, go 70 miles an hour, get on the interstate, going 80 or something, and they're just literally gonna be scared to death. They're gonna think they're in a spaceship or something, right? So it's just kind of relative until you get used to it. All right, who knows what other weird analogies I'll come up with. Uh, again, don't forget, it's election uh, season and uh, feelings are irrelevant. I'm gonna remind you again, Policies are, policies are what matter, duh, policies, you know, uh, that's all that matters. Uh, race, gender, all those kinds of things are totally irrelevant, uh, totally irrelevant. Uh, merit is what matters in, in all of life, right? And uh, if people, any, I, I will go out on a limb, anybody that is, is obsessed with, uh, you know, nationality, race, gender, all those things, all those identities, just obsessed with it. They're basically, they're somewhere on the bigotry scale, right? Ain't that kind of the definition of a bigot? You focus on things like that. You obsess about things like that. That's your frame of reference, you know? I, I, that's really low on my scale. I'm proud of that. It's like so low, it's invisible, I hope. At least I think it is. Uh, and I try to make sure it is, all right? Because uh, as I've said before, people impress me or don't impress me based on their attitude, their demeanor, their character, their, just the kind of people they are. That's, that's, that's what impresses or, or doesn't impress me, right? I guess it impresses me either way, but uh, the ones I want to be around, let's put it that way, are the ones who have just a, a good attitude or uh, uh, 
they're not violent or they're they're not obnoxious they're not bigots they're you know all those kinds of things uh and if especially and if i'm if i'm voting for someone I, uh, there's also that added uh, attribute that uh, I would like to see is some intelligence and common sense. And what they look like is just pretty much irrelevant. Yeah. So anyway, just a reminder of that. And uh, let's shoot this thing again. Let's go back to some magnums. Okay. Magnums. Nothing like a 357. I'll tell you what. Some of you watching today, right now, have probably been watching for years. Some of you, it might be two of you, it might be a hundred, it might be a thousand, I don't know. Uh, and there might be some of you who still do not own a 357 Magnum revolver. And I just uh, am very disappointed in you, to tell you the truth. You've had plenty of time to remedy that situation. Because how many times have I told you, reminded you about the joys of owning and firing a revolver, and then that the 357 is, that's where you start almost. That, I mean, that's a great starting point, especially as a range gun. Now, if you're talking about a pocket pistol or something, a defensive gun, maybe it's a little different. But just all around shooting, it is so versatile. There's so many different uh, loadings of 357 ammo, power factors, types of bullets, and then also a whole world of 38 special that fire in it. You know? So it's just, you've got really all the power you need for almost anything, and all the way down to powder puff loads. So just a wonderful chambering. So. I'm trying to sell you on 357, aren't I? <laughs> We're back to Magnum. Sorry, Clyde, you're going to get a hot one now. Yeah, that one got there a little faster. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good hog gun here, too. I'm going to take out the hog. Smack. Smacking. Oh, boy. 357 Magnum. Some more of the Underwoods. Uh, yeah, let me don't mix those up with the 38 Special. Uh, hard enough hand loading. You mix up your brass. Oh boy, what a nightmare. Uh, I got some advice for young people again. I probably said this before. I uh, I saw a I don't know something on Instagram. I forgot what exactly it said. Uh, but it's something to the effect that everything is so super important until we get sick. I'll be, yep. And there's a, a picture or a video or whatever, some poor woman in cancer ward or something. You know, everything is so important, all the details of our life, until we're sick. And then nothing else is important at all, right? Other than that. And you know, it's kind of the same. Just a reminder not to be a downer, but just a reminder, if you're up walking around and healthy, like I think I am today and everything, it's so easy to take that for granted, isn't it? I mean, I could take off running and run back to the house, you know, a couple hundred yards and, and you know, set up and shoot and everything. But uh, there's so many people who can't even get out of bed. You know, uh, they're so sick, uh, so infirmed. Uh, just uh, and, and people too have lost limbs and have a hard time getting around. So, you know, and really I bring that kind of thing up uh, from an optimistic standpoint, as much as anything, that we need to keep that in mind and it helps you appreciate life better. It helps you appreciate the day and what you're doing. You think you're bored something's not going right or somebody won't come to visit you or whatever, whatever it could be, you know, a million different things that, that aren't working out perfectly. Well, I'll tell you something that will keep things from working out perfectly is to maybe not have any legs or arms or, or to uh, have, uh, be in a cancer ward and be dying uh, or just be sick. You know, so, so sick you, you don't want to live, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, things don't work out so well when we're in that shape, right? 
So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, I, I think I've told you I used to be in medical publishing, and I would, I was around hospitals and you know medical schools, nursing school, all those kinds of things. And every time I was in a hospital, uh, walking around, I thought, wow, you know, just uh, a reminder. You get on an elevator in a children's hospital. You know, there's two or three kids with a head shaved, and they're obviously going through cancer treatments, and they're just cute little five-year-olds or three-year-olds or ten-year-olds, whatever they are. They really deserve that, don't they? Uh, I mean, you know, you just you just wonder, wow, how was I so lucky? You know, I'm walking around here, and I have nothing I'm aware of that's about to get me. Could be, but not aware of it. So anyway, keep that in mind. Uh, not that we want to get satis I don't mean we're obviously getting satisfaction out of other people's misfortune, but it's a reminder that uh, what's the line there before the grace of God go I? I guess that's from the Bible, right? Uh, you know, it, it, it could just so easily be me, be you in, in some horrible condition today. And, and we might be tomorrow. So while that's kind of a negative thing to think about, maybe it's also a positive thing to think about, to remember, you know, we're all so fragile. And if we're kind of getting around all right and doing most of the things we want to do, need to do, man, we better not take that for granted. Because as, uh, who was it, Don Henley and the old Eagle song, or was it a Don Henley song, I guess, uh, New York Minute, how things can change? Yeah, and they will, and they will for you and me, uh, probably. We just don't know when that minute's going to hit. Some of us had, a, we have had a few of those minutes where we've lost people, right? Family members and, and others. That phone rings. You know, we've had those minutes, you know, those seconds when everything is fine until whew, phone rings. So one day it'll be ringing for somebody else and the subject will be you or me, you know. So keep that in mind and take it as a positive. Enjoy life while you can. How's that? And one of the best ways is to, again, have a 357 Magnum. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Can I shoot that face again? <laughs> oh, I want to thank Alabama Holster. Great, great uh, company. My little concealment, uh, Alabama Holsters, I wouldn't trade for the world. Yep, sure would not. I just shot Alabama. Just shot the propane tank. I'm gonna put one on the cowboy. I'm gonna shoot him double action. Five a round left. <laughs> Guess what? I have another round left. All right. Yeah, man. Uh, as I was looking back through videos, now I'll let you go. I. Uh, Oh boy, I was reminded, I, cause I was trying to look at videos that I would just be sick to lose. And uh, well, there's a lot of them, like hundreds. <laughs> I would just land on one classic firearm after another. And then John makes it worse because he's so good with the camera. And there's these beautiful firearms, you know, just you're right in your face, the clarity, whether it's an Autry Springfield, working the, me working the bolt, or this gun, or a, a 1861 muzzle loader, or a Krag, or the Swiss K31. I mean, all those things, I just kept running across those things. And, and uh, this one thing that led me to want to shoot this, you know, oh, I got to get out one of my beautiful guns, one of these classic firearms. And, uh, and just, you know, I, that it, I, it made me even sicker to see all those, uh, or a lot of those videos and those firearms. I really, quite truthfully, truthfully, uh, have lost, uh, I don't know, my appreciation my remembrances or my appreciation for how many videos we have because I would just keep not, not to I'm not meaning to pat myself on the back I mean I'm just through the many years you know decade more than decade almost two decades where we've done that and put you know and, and shoot the gun and, and there it is on the table and it's just a beautiful firearm a, a 1911 or a cold single action or just 
you know, and the, the bullets going in it and all that. <laughs> and it just all those favorite firearms, you know, one video after another. I mean, hundreds of them. And I was like, wow, you know, I, I, I just sort of have lost track that we've done so many. Uh, and I'll say attractive video or a, a well, it, from my perspective, attractive uh, guns, okay? And it's hard to listen to me and see me yakking when I go back through those. But uh, but all those guns, those wonderful firearms, it's a reminder of uh, why I do this. It's a reminder of uh, why I enjoy this hobby so much, This those firearms. Uh, and so many of them historical. I, it's just uh, whew, so many of those things we've done, and and again the camera work, John's camera work. You know, most of them are pretty high resolution, going back 10, 15 years, and and uh, I mean just 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 wild, just uh, so many cool guns. And whether we talk too much, the video's too long, whatever all the other problems are with the video, just just seeing those guns. Uh, you know, up close and how they work and everything. Uh, it was just a reminder that wow, what a what a library of beautiful things <laughs> that we created. And I'm glad I dug through some of them because I don't. They were not lost. They're on Rumble, and um, I'll save a bunch of them. But uh, it, it, I, I guess you can appreciate it, or you wouldn't be watching. Yeah, you're a, a shooting enthusiast, a firearms enthusiast, and you can appreciate. The firearms like this or historical firearms old firearms that still work still operate and to see them up close and how they work that, that's why you come around and and uh it's why i in, enjoy the hobby so much and i have put so much of my own resources into those firearms i just do you know I, you know i could probably have a thousand acres somewhere but i i have uh so much well about a thousand <laughs> but but i have uh put a lot of money into firearms and I just enjoy those historical firearms you know, and enjoy shooting them. So and it's fun, you know, showing you all. But anyway, there's, it's, it's been a bit of an eye opener going back through a lot of those videos, uh, really has. There, there's so much, I, I don't know, I'm not even sure what, what I'm trying to say. Uh, partly it's a shame that so many people have such a negative perspective about firearms. That's for sure, because they are so, so interesting and and they're good looking objects and they're a tool that is both useful and fun. Yeah, yeah, sure. Anything can be um, a weapon, right? In the hands of somebody who is an evil doer, whether it's a knife, a machete, a, a car, or you know whatever they choose to use a gun but that that's not us is it so uh, that's just irrelevant uh not totally irrelevant but it's almost irrelevant right so uh i guess i'm gonna shut up i've uh, really yacked a lot and not shot enough probably so anyway i uh i'm sure just like uh it uh i was right you know of course and uh, <laughs> in uh, Lexington. I met a bunch of you and uh, appreciate you coming out. It's good to see you, all of you. A good crowd and and I'm sure I'll meet some of you. We'll have met some of you that are watching in Sevierville yesterday. Yeah. So I hope you were good to me and you behaved yourselves. Okay. <laughs> so it's always a good place to go. Uh, that that's it's a wonderful area over there around Pigeon Forge, Sevierville, Gatlinburg. You got the big knife shop across the street. You got buds. You got you got everything right right there. So uh, there's even a Bass Pro right up a few miles up the road. Uh, and I think it's kind of a tourist attraction over there. Yeah, yeah. Pigeon Forge, uh, Gatlinburg, um, Sevierville. And I don't know how many years it took, but they moved in these big mountains over there, big range of mountains. They call them the Smokies. So it wasn't like they had enough. They had all these shops and, you know, and water slides and all that. On top of that, they moved in these mountains 
So if you want to go hiking in the mountains and maybe see a bear, you got that too. So it's pretty interesting over there. So I'm going to let you go. I feel like there's some really piece of important information I forgot to mention, but I don't know what that could be. Really do appreciate you coming out and uh, visiting with me on Sundays. I thoroughly enjoy coming out and firing something that is fun to fire. Yeah. So appreciate you supporting all the folks that support us and, uh, you know, Ballastall, Talon Grips, and hey, Gun Fund Targets. That's my last paper target. I think I have some more coming. Uh, uh, it could be that uh, uh, next week I'm, uh, I, I draw my own target. <laughs> so <laughs> watch for that. I got some on order. So they take care, care of us pretty well. Life is good.